We all know the phrase, uh, all work and no play makes makes Jack a dull boy, right? (laughs) And I think that kind of sums it up. Hi, and welcome to the Her Business Podcast, the show for women growing and scaling a business. I'm Susie Daphnis, CEO at Her Business. Now, if you're ready to go from being a solopreneur to growing a sustainable business that gives you the clients, the income, and the impact you want, then you, my friend, are in the right place. Now, whether this is your first time listening to the show or you're a long-time listener, I am honored to have you here. This is episode 111, and my guest today is someone I am a big fan of. She's a multi-talented entrepreneur, and she's also a creative soul who is making big moves into the Australian art world in so many ways. Now, before I get into the show, I want to thank one of our listeners who's left a review on Apple Podcasts. Now, this wonderful reviewer is actually someone I happen to know. Her name is Sonia Maloki, and she's got a business called Digital Marketing Specialists. And she and her team specialize in search engine optimization, social media marketing, email marketing, and digital marketing. And they do that mostly with medium-sized businesses. I'll give you her website address in just a moment. And I happen to know Sonia because she's a longtime member of the Her Business Network, and she's also participating in our year-long business coaching program, a program where I walk you through moving from solopreneur to growing and scaling a business. It's called the Ideal Business Accelerator, and she's taking part in that right now. But lo and behold, she left this amazing review on Apple Podcasts, and she says, love listening to these podcasts on my walk into work. Susie's an excellent marketing leader and has really helped me to consider new ways of going about my business and helping my own clients. Thank you so much for your time, insight, and the uplift you give your community on here. I'm so hooked. And she gives us a five-star review. Thank you so much, Sonia. And reviews like this one are so important for a show like ours to get found and listened to. And that's why I'm more than thrilled to give Sonia and her business a shout out right here. Now, let's take a look at today's topic. The topic is why giving into your creative curiosity is good for your business. Now, I never used to think of myself as creative. I thought being creative meant that I could draw or design or paint or make things. And despite both my parents having worked with their hands all their lives, my dad was a builder, so he built homes he could fix about anything. Um, And my mom, she could turn her hand to sewing and knitting and crocheting and cooking, very creative in so many areas. I never found... um, that I thought of myself as creative. I never felt like I could do any of those arty things very, very well. But what I grew to understand over time is that as business owners, we are always creating. We are taking something from non-existence into existence every single day. We are bringing things into being, and that is ultimately the act of creation. So here's a question. Can exploring creativity more in and out of your workplace actually take your business forward and help you grow your business? My guest today says yes. And so we're going to be looking at how your creative interests can lead to innovation in your business. They certainly did for my guest and why creativity is a vital factor in determining your bottom line. Even how to incorporate more creativity into our life and how to tap into our inner genius. My guest is the wonderful Valerie Koo, a CEO, author, and visual artist, and the City of Sydney's curator of the 2019 Sydney Lunar Festival, which is one of the city's major art and culture festivals. So Valerie is, as I said, multifaceted. She's also the national director of the Australian Writers' Centre, which is a leading national centre for writing courses. Um, And students from all over the world have participated in her online programs. Over 15,000 students have enrolled in its courses. Now, she's also a best-selling author. Her book, Power Stories, The Eight Stories You Must Tell to Build an Epic Business, is a must-read for business owners. She's also a mentor. She's a podcaster. She's also a lot of fun and someone whose energy I admire so much. She's always on the go and always creating amazing work. So let's go to the interview, after which we're going to look at some really practical ways to put these lessons to work in your business. Valerie, so great to have you here. Great to be here, Susie. We are talking about giving in to your creative curiosity because you tell me it's good for our business. So let's start off by having you tell us how has that process been in your business? What does that look like? 
I think that giving in to your creative curiosity is listening to that inner thing that piques your interest, that thing that makes you go, oh, I wonder about that, or, um, oh, I really should explore that. And the thing is, when we are in our daily grind of business, we often think, no, I mean, that's an indulgence. Or we think, no, we, are, we should only explore the things that are going to bring us more revenue or reduce our costs or grow our business. And the thing is that that little thing that piques your interest may or may not be associated with your business. It may be something completely different. It might be doing a new fitness craze. It might be exploring the world of art. It might be just going down the rabbit hole of the the internet, searching for something, a a historical event that you're interested in. And the thing is, we often park that. I'll do that this weekend. And often we don't do that this weekend because (laughs) we don't write it down or whatever. But what I want to encourage people to do is to give in to those things, whether they are associated with your business or not. Because often it's giving in to that inner calling that you should explore something that can open up new possibilities and allow you to connect the dots on the things that are in your business. So do you mean, just so I understand, um, doing things outside of the business that would have a positive effect on the business? It's doing things that are either outside or inside your business, but usually when it's inside our business, we will pursue it, right? But we, and we usually don't pursue the things that are outside of of our business. So it's, it's actually giving into things that are both inside and outside our business, but particularly with the stuff that's outside our business to allow yourself to take the time to do it, whether or not it will impact your business, because whether or not it's immediately apparent that it will impact your business because you might not think that exploring, I don't know, the great works of Led Zeppelin <laughs> has anything to do with your business. But if you, if you have a push or creative urge to discover a little bit more about that, allow yourself to go down that rabbit path, because the rabbit hole, because you never know when something you discover in that will be the very thing that will actually impact your business. Mm. And the mere act of allowing yourself to be interested and passionate about something can be a very energizing um, activity that you can, and you can bring that energy back into your business as well. Mm. Tell us how you've gone down this rabbit hole yourself over the last couple of years and, and what that's meant for your business. So one of the things that I've always done is I've, I'm, I've always been curious and I've always, almost always allowed myself to just explore things that I'm interested in, in whatever field. But interestingly, and I've been running my business, I'm in the 14th year of business and, you know, I've run businesses before that. So I'm very used to the world of business. And uh, I think that sometimes you get to the stage where you are going very well in your business or, you know, you're, you're growing and um, there's nothing to complain about and the systems are fine and, and all of that. But sometimes you can get so caught up in revenue goals or yeah. um, making sure that you go to this conference or this mastermind and take away, make sure you ha- have a whole list of takeaways that you implement in your business. And those things are very important. But I think that if you don't allow yourself to explore that creative side or explore the things you're curious about and you make yourself only be focused on business-related goals and activities, it can really reduce your creativity, reduce your innovation, reduce your ability to think and connect to different things that will benefit your business. Because that certainly happened to me where... um, you know, the business was going well. We we did we were we would we had a really great year a couple a few years ago, and I thought that's great, really great year. Going to build on that. Going to go whole hog and focus on the business, and I did, and I let the other things slide. And interestingly, that's when things started to plateau. That's oh, when things started to go. It started to be not go down, but be harder. You know, to be be harder to maintain that that level. And so, and, and everyone kept telling me, so many people said, you need a hobby. That was their <laughs> version of, you know, explore your creative curiosity. I didn't even understand, but I don't need a hobby. I'm passionate about my business. You know what I mean? And um, I didn't know what I wanted to do as a hobby, but to cut a long story short, I eventually discovered the world of art and I went down that path 
um, really embraced it, really got into it, explored, allowed myself to explore the little things that were piquing my interest. Interestingly, re-energized in the business, business goes up again. Interesting. So it wasn't a, it wasn't any particular strategic, strategic things that I put in my business. It was the mere fact that I was more passionate, more energized and excited about the day as a whole, but also able to bring things that I've learned from other areas and bring them into my business. As you said, you've had your business for, was it 13 or 14? 14, 14 years, the 14th I think. 14th year. Right. And you've started multiple businesses. You are, you know, a downright entrepreneur. And yet, um, through what I've seen with you um, exploring this creative curiosity in the area of art, you've almost created another business for yourself. But, <laughs> you know, because you, go, you do things uh, full on. But it seems like you've been able to, I can see how your business experience can map over to your artistic career. Have you found uh, any direct application, I don't know, perhaps innovation or ideas from the art world now that you've been exploring that you have been able to put back into your business? Yeah, I think an interesting thing is to explore other industries. I think that's very important because we can get siloed in our own industry. And I think with the world of art and the different arts organisations, the different communities, I'm much more aware now of different different business models that I had not even considered before because the world of art is quite different. So not only different business models, but also different opportunities, um, opportunities with uh, government, opportunities with um, uh, 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 large corporations that I didn't actually even, that weren't even in my frame of reference before. So I think that it's opened a whole new world of opportunity in terms of um, where you can, where you can pitch your business because I had stuck, stuck so much in the world of small business and, you know, yeah. hung out with other entrepreneurs and stuff like that. I was very familiar with it. But I, and, and because I didn't explore other industries, I, I was kind of closed off. And another example of that, so it doesn't have to be art. Um, I mean, you go to the gym, you like the, <laughs> you like the gym, you're into CrossFit. And uh, I remember going to um, a gym, a, a particular gym in, in Australia, and it was a very successful one. It had ran very successful classes. And I remember going to the sessions and it was always packed. And I thought, mm. this is great. This is customer loyalty to the nth degree, to the point where they had to turn people away. Not only that, they were, they were, um, they were so popular that people attending that particular class, some people, not all people, were, it loved it so much, they got tattoos of oh, that particular really? class. And I thought <laughs> that is beyond customer loyalty, that's customer fandom. How do they do that? So I started exploring that creative curiosity and just going down that rabbit path, I mean, rabbit hole, <laughs> I keep saying rabbit path, um, uh, going down that rabbit hole and researching and researching. And, and through that, I was able to discover their business model, the principles they put in place, how they went national. This was before I went national. And I used that as a basis to take my company national as well. So, you know, it doesn't have to come from a creative mm -hmm. industry. It just can gotcha. come from another industry as well. I think that's so interesting because so often I see business owners, they look at what the competition is doing. And yet I know in my own experience, anytime I've pivoted and gone way ahead of the competition, it's because when I look to a totally different industry, like you said, you're at the gym, the classes are full, what are they doing? Or you go to a great restaurant, you're like, well, what are they doing, you know, yes. to do that? Um, and just being curious enough to sort of unearth that. Um, just before we move on, I know that this rabbit hole that you went down with art um, actually has had some amazing um, new paths open up. And I know that you've just curated, beautifully curated, the Lunar Festival. Can you just take us a little behind the scenes of, because I can't imagine that was something on your radar <laughs> <laughs> originally. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So um, I went uh, into the world of art a couple of years ago and I threw myself into it because I loved it. It lit me up. I wanted to do it till 3.30 a.m. every morning, which I did. <laughs> um, and I got so into it and I got immersed in it and I thought this is great and I wanted to learn more and connect more with more people. And, yes, yeah, so um, apart from being able to sell original art and to sell prints online, um, 
I really wanted to connect with more people in the industry. And an opportunity came up with the City of Sydney to, uh, for, to, for the position of curator of the Sydney Lunar Festival, which is um, uh, last year attracted 1.4 million people and involves a whole lot of art installations and a huge program of events and is the largest celebration of Lunar New Year outside of Asia in the world. Mm, wow. And so it was, um, I thought, what a great way to immerse yourself in it, right? And what a great way to learn more and explore and push your boundaries of your creative curiosity. So I decided, okay, I'm going to put my hand up. And I'm glad I did, even though there were a lot of things saying, you know, um, can you really do it and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but I'm glad I did because fortunately I got the role and we've just done the festival and it was, it ran really well and it was, it, it was great. And it was, um, I'm, I'm glad I didn't allow myself to think, Oh, you know what? I'm not going to go down that path. That's not my industry or I'm not going to go down that path. I, I don't, um, why would I do it or anything like that? Hmm. I think there's a lot in what you just said. And I know there's a term that you have, which is the, our creative quotient. Can you tell us what that is? Yeah, so you we all have a creative quotient, just as we have an IQ and an EQ. Well, this is your CQ, right? Your creative quotient. Right. And, you'll create, and we have it to different levels. And, and I truly believe that our creative quotient gets higher the more we give in to our curiosity. And that creative quotient is our ability to take lots of disparate elements, often in things that are not related at all, and somehow connect the dots. I know you talk about connecting the dots mm -hmm. and it's essentially about being able to connect all the dots and create something even better. So it's, it's essentially innovation as well. There's another, um, abil the ability to, to bring innovation into our business. That's where our creative quotient comes in. I love it. It would be a great name for a book if you decided to write one, Valerie. <laughs> <laughs> I would grab that term. Uh, um, what is the downside to ignoring going down these rabbit holes with our curiosity? You kind of hinted to it before, but I'd like to just sort of really make this point from your perspective of what you've seen. I think the downside is that... Um, well, we all know the phrase, uh, all work and no play makes, makes Jack a dull boy, right? <laughs> and I think that kind of sums it up. If we stay too um, uh, insular, if we stay too focused, focus is good, but if you stay in too narrow a field, you end up in a rut and you end up lowering your creative quotient because you're not exposing yourself to all of these other industries and ideas so that you can connect the dots. It might actually be something that's quite foreign for you to understand because you are always exposing yourself to so many different industries, ideas, and that sort of thing. But it actually is quite easy to let yourself, mm. for people to let themselves go into this narrow lane thinking that they are just being single-minded and focused on their business when in fact they could be doing more harm than good. That's really interesting because just in the last couple of years, I've always been part of masterminds and I know we were part of a mastermind together for many, many years. Uh, and I went down the path of making a big investment to join a mastermind on the other side of the world where I would be surrounded by uh, people who had a similar business model to me, but in so many different industries. And it has just opened my eyes to so many possibilities. It's given me amazing contacts and connections and it, um, is a way to go down rabbit holes that I didn't know existed and <laughs> bringing back so much uh, into my business um, from that one decision to expand my vision and who I was connected to. And, you know, like you going into the art world, connecting with totally different people with different ways of speaking, like they had speak a different language in the art world than the business world. But anytime we can do that, um, it just sort of expands, like what you're calling, I guess, our creative question. Yeah, absolutely. I think people mistakenly think that it's an indulgence or that it, they don't have time for that or they really need to only focus on the a target customer or, or that sort of thing. But in fact, that, that, that is not going to work for you. You need, to, you need both. 
Mm. So I want to talk to, especially to those listening who are in the creative area. And so your makers or your photographers, or you might be an artist, or you might be doing some work that is a very personal, personal expression of uh, what you are. And we often hear the idea of the starving artists. And I know <laughs> that so many creatives have struggled uh, to monetize the business, whether even if they're fashion stylists or um, dressmakers or in the design field. But you say that doesn't have to be the case. Yeah, absolutely. I think that uh, you can definitely make money as a creative. I don't believe in the idea of being a starving artist. I had thought erroneously (laughs) many years ago before I became a writer uh, and before I became an artist that to be a creative, you had to be poor. And I didn't want to be poor. (laughs) So I went into the world of business. I studied economics and accounting, which is crazy. (laughs) It took me years to finally realize that you don't have to be poor at all. You can actually make a very healthy, very lucrative income as a creative, as long as obviously you have the right attitude. I think that a lot of people who believe that they, that in the myth of the starving artist, who believe that that's the way artists should be, who believe that they should exist on, you know, grants or, or, or crowdfunding or, or that sort of thing, that's the existence that they will live. But if they believe that they can make money from it and put the steps in place for that to happen, then you can make money from it. Mm. Uh, I love that. And I actually, you know, have some friends who, you know, they teach photographers how to grow a business or they teach artists how to grow a business. Uh, and I know that you work with authors through the Australian Writer Centres on how to actually build their business. Um, how do we all just start to tap into this creative genius? How to tap to tap in your own creative genius? Mm-hmm. Listen to that urge that's inside you, no matter how small. One of the clues for me was, um, so I get a professional um, organiser every six months or so to help me declutter my shelves and cupboards and, you know. Oh, really? (laughs) Because I'm not very organised. And every time, and I've done this same lady, I've used her for years, she would come over, reach into my cupboards, pull out art supplies and say, you haven't touched this for six months. I know. <laughs> Let's throw it out. I would agree to throw them out, but then I would go buy them again. I would buy them again and put them in the cupboard. Not you, <laughs> put them in the cupboard. She would come back six months later and go, look, you bought them again. I <laughs> We've got to throw this out. They're taking out space. You haven't even opened them. And I would go out again somewhere along that, that period and buy them again and admit it and not use them. But I obviously had a leaning in that direction to even buy them in the first place, but then not let myself use them, you know, because I didn't have the confidence or, yeah. or, or felt that I didn't have enough knowledge. And so I'd put them in the cupboard. cupboard. But that was a, a, a sign to me that clearly there was some thing there that I was interested in, but I needed to take the next step you know, and actually use them, right? <laughs> right. So I want to talk about that because I know that um, you went through a process. So when we start to get a wisp of something that lights us up, something we might be interested in, but here we are now and where we want to be, we just there's a big skill gap. There's a big confidence gap. Um, and so tell us a little bit about the process, about how you took this wisp, you had the supplies, and then actually to now where you are selling prints online, you are showing your art, you're winning art prizes, like in a very short period of time. Can you take us through that creative process? Yeah. So the initially, it's two things. Number one, baby steps. Um, and, and, and that is, you don't have to, if you think I'm going to have to enroll in a bachelor's degree at the national art school or whatever, um, you, you're, that's never going to happen because it's too big a leap. So it's taking small steps. So I happened to find a, um, a, a nearby artist who would just give me a lesson on a Saturday afternoon. And he was in the next suburb. It was very easy for me to go to. It wasn't a big commitment. I could just go week to week and learn new things. And that was one of the things that opened the whole world up for me. So, so number one, baby steps. Number two, find a someone or, or a course or a community where you can access some guidance. And, and 
it's like dating, right? It's you, I maybe don't know, the, I haven't done that for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> maybe the first person that you go to, your first teacher might not be ideal. Don't give up. Just try again. So I did a lot of little, little short workshops to start off with. And some were fantastic and some were not, but they were so such small commitment that it didn't matter if they were not. And so I just tried lots of, I, I dated <laughs> a lot of teachers in a sense to discover the ones that really gelled with me and then, you know, went into a long-term relationship with some of them. So it's, it's yeah, baby steps and, and making sure you don't judge the experience by the first teacher or mentor that comes along. Try different things. Hmm. And that, you know, this applies whether you're going, you, you're, the little wisp for you is art or it could be filmmaking or it could be, as in my case, you know, it would be something probably a physical, um, yes. some sort of sport or some use of my body because that for me is a great way to disengage from <laughs> and to de-stress. You know, uh, some people would find it stressful, but I actually, <laughs> <laughs> I get so immersed in that it's relaxing. So if we bring it back to your main business, uh, which yes. is Writer Centre, um, can you see what the impact of what you're doing out here, really following that thread for your creativity, what the impact of that is on the business? You've said increase in, um, in, in revenues and you being more engaged. Is there anything else that you can see ties back specifically to you having gone down this rabbit hole? One of the biggest things, which you've just mentioned, is just the re-energizing of myself and my attitude to my business. And that is priceless. Um, it's, it's been the discovery also that, that I didn't, wasn't even aware of, and I don't know how I could not have, that almost all of my staff are also into art. I didn't really? know that before. Ah. Yeah. Um, but, but without a doubt, the biggest impact is because I'm so excited and so passionate um, about art that's just carried over to pretty much all aspects of life, including my business. Because when you get into the 14th year of your business, it yeah. doesn't carry the same level of excitement usually than when you're in your first three years. But I do feel that excitement. I do feel that, that energy simply because I'm so excited about everything else at the moment. And that's been something that I didn't consciously think that was going to happen or I didn't plan for, but it certainly has been a great benefit. You are absolutely right. It is priceless to be that engaged in your own life, you know, and all aspects of it uh, because you got out of being so focused on growing the business and the bottom line and, you know, and using a totally different part of your brain, a different part of your expression. Um, I want to thank you so much for joining me. Is there anything you would like to leave us with? I think that some people say, but I don't know what I'm interested in. I don't know what creative, what rabbit hole to go down. And that's really valid because I had a period of that as well. People were saying to me, get a hobby. And I didn't know what hobby. Oh, should I learn a language? Should I do this? Should I do this? And I, and I think that just persist and just try different things. And like I said, even if they are short you know, a wine, a two hour wine appreciation night, a two hour workshop on, on screen printing or whatever, just try different things because you will find the thing that unlocks and then the floodgates will open. But that will never happen if you don't just try those little, little things in order to discover what really is, you know, inside of you waiting to come out. Valerie, I am inspired to follow your advice. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Actually, quick story. I was just in San Francisco and one of the people that I was there with is a very accomplished artist and I know that you know him and he did a one-day art class and uh, there were about 21 of us and normally put me in that environment. I'm like, I don't paint. I'm not creative in that way. Just give me marketing. That's my chick. Uh, and, I, you know, you normally I'd be in a fetal position in the corner in that sort of environment. But, you know, when like you said, you dated a few, you found a good one. When you have good instruction, I created art, Valerie. I would, if I had it here, I would hold it up for you. <laughs> That's not too bad. Imagine if I actually let myself go into this. But what I found was that for that time when I was doing that, everything else sort of melted away. Yeah. 
and I could just be with this piece of self-expression. And it wasn't perfect. And I could have judged myself so many times, but it was like putting myself right back in the learner seat. And as business owners, we do that over and over again. You're just giving us a different way to come at it um, in order to really ignite that creativity because of the benefits it's going to have on all aspects of our life and especially our business. Yes. Oh, can I add one more thing? Absolutely. I also think that um, if you're thinking, you know, where should I focus, where should I put my energy or what should I explore? I'm a big believer in the idea that your genius is what comes naturally to you. It's something that took me way too long to discover because all my life through school, through everything, I thought I had to do the things that I was not good at in order to be better. So I, I decided to do all the things that were hard. Even though I really was good at art in you know year seven, I decided, oh, I can't do that. That's too easy. I need to right. do physics and chemistry instead because they're hard. <laughs> and so, and I went through so much of life picking the hard route mm. because I thought, well, I need to do the stuff that I find hard in order to get better at it. That is so ridiculous and counterintuitive. Your genius is what comes naturally to you. Do the thing you're, or, that you already have a tendency towards. Do the thing that you are already a little bit good at because that makes so much sense, right? It does. It does. And I think that that is a great um, point to leave us on uh, because we can um, create more work for ourselves than we need to. And it goes back to the story that you said about, you know, it's like if your parents were saying, well, you're not going to be an artist, you need to do something real, you know, with your life, right? Uh, it's hard a decision to make. It's a hard decision uh, possibly to make for a young person who thinks, well, no, I need to do something serious. Uh, with my life. So thank you so much for helping us explore this idea of giving into our creative curiosity because it's good for our business. Thank you so much for joining me. You're welcome, Susie. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. I always love the time that I spend with Valerie. And I'd love to know what you're inspired to create as a result of listening here today. How will you inject more creativity into your work and then see that really impact the bottom line? Um, I want to allow you to get in touch with Valerie and also find out about her great book, which is a fantastic business book. And so I've put that information over on our website at herbusiness.com forward slash 111, herbusiness.com forward slash 111. Now, Valerie's a great communicator. I'm sure you heard that. But not only in speaking, also on video, in writing. Uh, she's a great community leader. If you want to write, I highly recommend her courses. I've done two of them. Um, she's also the head of our Communicate Day over at the Reach Retreat. Now, the Reach Retreat is our five-day intensive for women business owners that we do in Hawaii every year. And it's really for women with established businesses who are really ready to find more direction in their business and to know how to communicate that to the world, right, across all different ways that you can communicate. And not only communicate, with our clients, but also our prospects and our staff and everyone who's a stakeholder who we want to enroll in our dream. So we are back in October at The Reach Retreat and you can find out more at thereachretreat.com. Now, before we go, I have a gift for you. Today's episode of the Her Business Podcast was very much about you, right? And you are the most important part in your business. Injecting your creativity into your business is very much an act of self-confidence. It's putting yourself out there more. It's bringing more of what you love into your business. And I truly believe that this you growth zone, so you is one of eight, what we call growth zones here at Her Business. I'll explain that in just a moment. But I really believe that the you growth zone is particularly important for women business owners to really focus in on because we're so busy with work and family or looking after our teams or our clients that we can often be in the last place on the list when it comes to getting the input and support we need. And having that time to think, to focus on yourself, to do the deep work that you need to do, um, what I found over many, many years is that this is so crucial. This game 
is the game changer for your business. And that's because you can have so many other things working really well for you. You can have great systems, you can have great team, you can be making money. But if you are not feeling fulfilled and that your creative expression is not coming out in whatever way works for you, then that can really impact your results. You are such an important asset to your business. I really want you to hear that. And to keep the business growing, you need to keep growing and on multiple levels right? Your mindset, your skill set, and really taking care of yourself too. And your business can only expand to the level of expansion that you've achieved as a leader and as an individual. That is what I found for sure. And so this is my favorite growth zone. Now, the you growth zone is one of eight business growth zones that for over 20 years here at Her Business, we've used to mentor women who want to grow their businesses. And in helping thousands and thousands of women, um, what I know is that all sustainable businesses, all businesses that continue to grow, that become profitable, have these eight things under control, right? So some of the other growth zones include sales and marketing and people and systems and the products and services that you sell right? There's eight in total. And I want to give you um, all of these. I want to give you an easy way to understand how these growth zones work in your business and how they look in your business right now. Because maybe you are really stuck on where do I go next if I want to grow my business? Is it sales and marketing or is there already clients coming in, but I'm growing out of control and so I need more systems or I need to be hiring the right people because I don't want all this responsibility on my own shoulders. So I have a gift for you and it's based on the support that we've given thousands of women over many years. It gives you a really clear snapshot of where you need to focus on right now in your business. So I want you to jot this down. I want you to go to herbusinessgrowthaudit.com. That's herbusinessgrowthaudit.com to get your free assessment. And it's going to let you go from being chaotic in any area of your business to really understanding the next steps you want to take in that part of your business, whether it's getting more clients or reaching more people or getting more organized or finally reaping the rewards of your business. It takes about 15 minutes to do. It's all online. It gives you a very thorough report and it tells you exactly where the gaps are right now, where your strengths are right now, and perhaps you can take the focus off for a little bit and where you really want to be focusing on next to move the needle in the right direction for your business. So that's over at herbusinessgrowthaudit.com. It's absolutely free. And uh, as I said, it takes you about 15 minutes. You want to grab it right now because it's not going to be available forever. Now, what's coming up in next week's episode? I am so excited because if you're like most entrepreneurs, you started your business so that you could be your own boss, you could make more money, you can live life on your own terms. But if you worry that your business is going to collapse, if you are not paying it constant attention, or if you feel like you're sacrificing your family or your friendships or your freedom just to keep the business alive, then you are going to love next week's episode. Because imagine creating a business that could run itself and one that freed you up to do what you love when you want while the business continues to grow and turn a profit. That is what's coming up next week. My guest next week is the wonderful Mike Michalowicz, who's the author of books like Profit First and The Pumpkin Plan both bestsellers. We are talking about his newest book, which I think is probably my favorite. It's called Clockwork, Design a Business to Run Itself. You definitely want to tune in next week. So you want to subscribe to the show so that you can get the next episode delivered directly to you when it's released. So whether you're on Stitcher, Google Play, Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure you subscribe to the show to get that episode. It is a cracker. If you enjoyed this episode of Her Business, I would also really appreciate it if you would tell your friends. I want to share this information, these great presenters with as many women as possible. And I would be so honored if you would leave me a review on Apple Podcasts. Um, as I said, it helps us get found. It also means I give you a shout out here on the show. And I love nothing more than promoting women's businesses. So be sure to tell me who you are and what your business is inside of your review. Thank you so much to my guest, Valerie Koo, the wonderful Valerie Koo. Um, thank you for being here with me today. Join me next time when we speak with Mike Michalowicz. I'll see you real soon on the Her Business Podcast. Bye for now.